Well, Romanius Kedrus, Ahadu, Amalak, Kesahai, Rocha, Kesahai, Marbea, Wegmatulaka, Yexiavit, Mitfarakayu. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Thanks to God! How are you doing this morning? Okay. Okay. That was good. You're powerful enough today. So today is Kedis, or Holy, a day where we think about how God uses holiness, or the sacred, the Halloween, in our lives. But one of the big ways in which we make ourselves holy or different, special, unique, set apart, distinguished, is from the world. The church, if it means anything, is the bride of our bridegroom, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And as the bride of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, she needs to be holy. So she needs to be totally different from the rest of the world, from the rest of the cosmos, from the rest of the creatures that occupy the same space and the same time. We're in the midst of Abhi's Om, the great fast. Today is the first day of the week, and it is the first day of the second week of Kuddus, as I said. So. I would like to share with you, because it's also the culmination in the American calendar of February, which is Black History Month, the words of one of the most famous reverends that is often celebrated during Black History Month, but who should be celebrated at all times? <laughs> well, yes, God, God is celebrated at all times, but I, I'm specifically talking about a black American teacher right now whom I believe God worked through. He was not a perfect human being like Jesus is, but he's someone who we could point to that was like us. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God, is great because he shows us perfection. And some people learn well by seeing when somebody does something perfectly. But other people, I know this because I'm a teacher, learn from people who they see fall down and get up, fall down and get up. So you could relate to someone who's able to be weak like you in certain moments, and then at other times you could relate to someone who's just way above your level. So I wanted to share with you the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says, if you cannot fly, you should run. If you cannot run, you should walk. And if you cannot walk, you should crawl. But whatever you do, you need to keep on moving. You need to keep on pressing forward. And I think this is sage advice for all of us during our fasting season. Angels don't need to eat. They don't need to drink. So for them, fasting is very easy. And sometimes, during this period, we think we can immediately be angels. Now that would be nice if we didn't need any food or any drink. But we are human beings, and what we're trying to do is to control our bodies. Uh, but Thomas often reminds us through his rhetorical question, are we living so that we get to eat? Or are we eating so that we can live? Do we work a nine to five job? Do we go to school five days a week so that we can go and have some savory snack? And is that the highlight of our way of life? No. I hope not. No. Or do we eat for sustenance? Yes. In the Lord's Prayer, there are many different translations of daily bread, but some people, some newer scholars, are wanting to translate <laughs> as give us food that sustains us. Give us just enough food for today, for right now, 
so that we can survive. And we will be thankful for you. And we'll spend our time not focused and arguing on which restaurant we want to go to or what our moms or dads are going to make us, but instead on thanking God who made us and who provides whatever food we have for us. So that's something that we've got to think about. So going back to the quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., if you're able to, I have to give you the example of our monks. Some of our best monks, who you see even in an earthly sense, living it deep into their 80s, 90s, and 100s, are able to live this way through the same thing that anti-aging and longevity or life doctors are finding out. That fasting has not only spiritual benefits, but physical benefits as well. And it's amazing to see them verify what our church has known and taught for centuries. So if you want to fly like the monks, what they do, and I've expressed this to our adult English class who meets in the corner room over there, that some so well I would also use after Kadassi, but I've expressed this to the adult English class as well. Those of you, if you're adults, please join us as well. What they do is they take a false banana tree and without many great spices, without barbare, without kebe, without kororima, I don't know if they even add chow, they boil it and they eat it once a day for dinner and they prepare it communally. So they eat at 6 p.m. and then the whole rest of the day, <laughs> all of the day, all of the night, they're not eating. They're either sleeping or they're praying or they're keeping busy taking care of their monastery. So imagine that that is flying. If you can get to that level where all you need to do is eat once a day and then the rest of your day is spent thanking the Lord, God bless you. If you're not on that level yet, then what do you have to do? If you can't fly, what do you do? You run. So if you can't do that, <laughs> If you can't do the flying, you do the running. An example of the running is my, gra my grandmother's six month anniversary of her falling asleep with the Lord will be next week, and we'll honor her with a luncheon that I invite you to commemorate her with next week. Her and a lot of our Natoch and Abbatoch here have grown accustomed, especially during fasting seasons, especially because she didn't really have a full-time nine to five job, to focus on not maybe necessarily doing the 6 p.m., but doing 3 p.m. And it is through the grace of God and her prayers that I know I'm still here standing with all of you and being able to share his word of life for all of you. So if you can't fly like the monks, run like our grandmothers. And if you can't run, what should you do? Walk. Walk. Maybe now you all can help me out. What would walking look like? Can anyone give me an example? <laughs> That's right, so literal walking is yes, taking a step and then a step and the step. And in fact, the Chinese have a saying that the journey of a thousand steps begins with the first one. And that's a similar thought, that you go one step by one step by one step. We'll try this again, otherwise I'm gonna have to feed you with a silver spoon. Who can give me an example? I gave you an example of what flying would look like and what running. What do you think walking would look like? Waiting until 12 noon to eat. Now, most people, I think, at least attempt to make it to 12 noon. Some of us others might just have uh, waking up with some cereal and do almond milk instead of 2% fat milk, or we might wake up with burna and shiro instead. But those of us who are trying will at least, I think, attempt 12 noon to make it a little bit different, a little bit set apart, or a little bit holier. <laughs> now, the next one might get me in trouble with our fathers, but we'll, we'll see what, uh, what you all could do. The bare minimum. After walking is what? If you can't walk, what do you do? I'm sorry? 
Okay, so now we'll go back to the children and we'll see. Could you give me an example of what crawling would be during a fasting season? <laughs> well, one o'clock is class 12, so that would be like power walking or speed walking. 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Eat, okay, okay, that's good. Eating three times a day, but maybe following 12 noon, but instead of eating just one time at 12 noon, eating three times. That's one example of crawling. That's good. Do you have another one? <laughs> Eight o'clock, yeah. Sure, that's really crawling. That's a slow crawl. We'll take that. Put your hands down. So we'll take that, yeah. <laughs> 8 o'clock may be better than 6 a.m. if you're waking up for 6 a.m. and eating at 6. So maybe 8 o'clock would be a crawl. Another thing we could do is focus on what Kedusiaren or Jared of Aksum has reminded us during his Koma de Gua, which is one of his most famous books and one of the first books that people like Abba Laika and Abba Hussein and Abba Thomas and Kasis Valaku during his time as a deacon as well would sing during this time. And during Tsoma Dibwa, one of the most famous quotes that we hear often quoted by a lot of folks in our church is our, uh, our eyes should fast, our tongue or our mouths should fast, and our ears should fast. So if we've utterly failed at flying, with food. If we've utterly failed at controlling ourselves by running or by walking, then at the bare minimum in our crawl, we need to make sure that we need to have our eyes fasting, that we need to have our tongue fasting, and we need to have our ears fasting. In fact, I'm gonna read for you because during this swim time, if you noticed, some of you would, some of you would not, when the gospel comes out, what we see is a little different. And what we said today, which is a little different than non-fasting time, is You have comforted us through your prophets. So I'm going to read from you through the prophet Isaiah. And then you tell me if you feel comforted at the end, because that's the last thing that I'll do. And it is exactly the same advice that Uziadid gave about what a real fast looks like. Cry aloud, spare not, this is Isaiah 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted? and you see it not. Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with wicked fists. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such a fast that I choose? A day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rush? And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast? And a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. Children, you're dismissed. Enjoy your fasting season.